This is Teacher Marian. Welcome to my video tutorial. In this lesson, we will be talking about the measures of central tendency, which is the mean, the median, and the mode. Math often deals with data sets, and data sets were often just collections or groups of numbers. These numbers were maybe just the results of scientific measurements or surveys or other data collection methods. For example, you might record the ages of each of your family into data set, or you might measure the weight of each of your pets and list them on a data set. Those data sets are fairly small and easy to understand, but you can have much bigger sets. A really big data set might contain the cost of every item in the store, or the top speed of every land mammal, or the brightness of all the stars in the galaxy. Those data sets contain a lot of different numbers. If you had to look at a big data set all at one time, it would be a pretty hard to make sense of it or say much about it. Besides, that's a lot of numbers. And that's where mean, median, and mode can help us out. So let's learn what each property really is and find out how to calculate them for any particular data set. Let's start with the mean. You may not have heard about the mean before, but you have heard of the average. If so, that's a good news. Mean means average. Mean and average are just two different terms, but with the same or exact property of a data set. The mean or average is an extremely useful property. To understand what is it, let's look at the simple data set that contains five numbers. As a visual aid, let's also represent those numbers with stacks of blocks whose heights corresponds to their values 1, 8, 3, 2, and 6. Right now, since each of the five numbers is different, the stacks of blocks are all at different height. What if we rearrange the blocks with the goal of making the stacks of the same height? In other words, if each stack could have the same amount, what do you think would the amount be? Well, with a bit of trial and error, you'll see that we have enough blocks for each stack to have a total of 4. That means that the mean or average for original data set would be 4. Some of the numbers are greater than 4 and some are less. But if the amounts could all be made the same, they'd all become 4. So that's the concept of the mean. It is the value you get if you smooth out or flatten all the data values into one consistent value. But is there a way to use math to calculate the mean? The answer is yes. So here's the mathematical procedure. This time, we'll not use the trial and error, but instead, the systematic way to make the stacks on the same height. This way involves the clever combination of addition and division. We know that we want to end up with 5 stacks that have the same number of blocks, right? So first, we have to add up the numbers, which is like putting all the 2 blocks into one big stack. Adding all the numbers or counting all the blocks shows that we have a total of 20. Next, we divide that number into 5 equal parts. The stack has a total of 20 blocks divided into 5 equal stacks means that we all have 4 in each since we have 20 divided by 5 is equal to 4. So that's the mathematical procedure we do to get the mean of a data set. It's just two simple steps. First, add up all the numbers in the set and divide the total you get by how many numbers you add it up. The answer you get is the mean of the data set. Alright, that's the mean. How about the median? Median is the middle of the data set. It's the number that splits the data set into two equally sized groups or halves. The half contains the number that is greater than or equal to the median, and the other half contains a number that is less than or equal to the median. Finding the median is sometimes easy and sometimes hard. 
That's because finding the median of the data set requires that its members be in order from the least to the greatest or vice versa. And if the data set has a lot of numbers, it may take a lot of work to put them in order. To make it easier, let's start with a small data set that is not in order. It would be easier to list them from the least to greatest. There we have the data set 1, 2, and 3. Finding the median or needle is easy. It's 2 because 2 is located exactly in the middle. Before we try a little harder, I want to point out the mean and median are the same number, but sometimes they're not. So again, median is the number that divides the dataset into two exact numbers in either side of it. But what if there is no middle member? All of the dataset we used have an odd number of members, but what if the set has an even number of elements or members? Like the dataset 1, 2, 3, and 4, there is no middle element that splits the set into two equally sized groups. If that's the case, we can use the concept of mean if data set has even numbers of elements. To find the median, take the two middle elements and calculate its mean of the two. That number would serve as our median. For example, in the set 1, 2, 3, and 4, take the two middle numbers 2 and 3 and get the mean of the two. We can do that by adding 2 and 3 and divide the total by 2. 2 plus 3 is equal to 5 divided by 2 is equal to 2.5. So, the median is 2.5. Even if 2.5 isn't the middle, still, it's the median for it divides the data set into two equally sized groups. So now you know the difference between the mean and the median. But how about the mode of the data set? What does it mean? Well, mode is just the value in the data set that occurs most often. In the data set we used so far has no mode since none of the data values were repeated. But what if we had this data set? Some of the values were repeated. If we rearrange them, we can see that there are one ones, two twos, and three threes. Mode again is the value that occurs most often. Therefore, the mode is three since there are three threes. And there are also data sets which have more than one mode. For example, as you can see, in this set, seven is repeated twice and also 15. That means they tie for a title mode. So the modes are seven and 15. So now you have learned about measures of central tendency, the mean, median, and the mode. That's all for this video. Hope you learned something for today. Bye-bye!